this is just the beginning. So if we're able to restore eyesight and we're able to return the rejuvenation of our skin, if we start to wear out even our heart or kidneys, for us to be able to get bioidentical kidneys printed is the future and we're not that far away. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today on this episode of The Cabral Concept. We're about to get into a high performance health show all about longevity, life extension, anti-aging, and this miraculous new therapy called Yamanaka Factors. So this actually won the Nobel Prize a little over a decade ago in medicine. And what it looked at was the ability to turn back the clock on the body, on cells. So when you look at this, it's very, it's very interesting because there's been quotes by um, David Sinclair that I'll talk a little bit about as well, and his research, uh, Dr. Horvath, Stephen Horvath, uh, that I've spoken about before, the Horvath clock. That's actually how we measure biological age. It's, it's one of the methodologies for looking at the clock of the body. But when they started to use these Yamanaka factors, and there's four specific, I'll call them genes for right now, um, or modifiers, I think would be a better name for what they do, is that when... Uh, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how they do it in just a moment, but when instituted in the body and they are directed at a specific cell or type of cell or organ, they can actually turn back the clock on time. So not just aging, meaning like they take it back to 20 years ago or 30 years ago. It's a system reset of that particular organ, gland, cell, et cetera. It's absolutely remarkable. I think it was just a week or two ago. Let's just make sure I have it here for you. Yes, it was two weeks ago in episode 2652. So we'll link that up for you here today. We talked about how the same Yamanaka factors were used in reversing skin age and gray hair in mice by somewhere around 20 to 30 years. So meaning they, they took what would be the equivalent to a 60 to 70 year old human, because they use this in terms of um, mice years, which would be somewhere around 18 to 20 months or so for these uh, mice. And what they did, because uh, that's the end of their life, getting towards the end of their lifespan, is they see the grain hair. They see the skin quality. And what they did, and I would love you to check out that, that uh, podcast as well, they took the gray hair, they, uh, remo- the gray hair literally turned back to its original color and the skin hair began to rejuvenate 20 to 30 years younger. So the skin of the 60 plus or so you know, year old mice began to cut that essentially in half to 30. And they believe that there should be no difference with using this with humans as well. So still at the experimental stage with essentially lab-based mice, uh, but the sun, the same now is being done with eyesight and blindness. And here's the interesting thing. When the, there, were, there are four specific Yamanaka factors, I've spoken about those and I, I list them on episode 2652. So why don't I do this? I'm just gonna link up the three big takeaways. I'm gonna link up all the research and I'm gonna link up the previous podcast if you wanna go deep on all the high performance health, anti-aging podcasts, and basically like life optimization, uh, or if you wanna just check out 2652, I'll link them all up at today's show, which is stephencabral.com slash 2666. And if you go to that, all uh, of the show notes will be there. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna share with you for. There is four main Yamanaka factors. For like eight years, they weren't able to do exactly what they wanted to do with them. They knew that in a Petri dish or, you know, especially in a, in a lab uh, testing ground, they were able to do these great things. When they started to use them with certain animals or lab-based mice, they weren't able to get the effects that they wanted to. And then they found by using three out of the four, not all four, but three out of the four Yamanaka factors, these specific, let's just call them gene modifiers, they were able to get the results that they're looking for. So although there's still much more research to be done, I had to share this study with you. And the reason is, is that this is just the beginning. It's why I tell people, again, inside of uh, High Performance Health, and, and, and we're gonna be talking about this so much at our live event this October called Reimagining Health Summit. It's reimaginginghealthevent.com if you wanna learn more about it. These breakthroughs are within the next decade. So they're all pretty much predicted to be somewhere from like 
2028 to 2032, 33, somewhere within there. We're talking about a decade or so. I always say give it an extra five years. So like I'm looking at 10 to 15 years. So in the study that we're about to go through, they looked at glaucoma. Very, very common, right? As you get older, the uh, vision can become weaker and weaker. They can get a lot of inflammation in the eyes. You can end up with glaucoma. Glaucoma can eventually lead to poor eyesight, less and less vision, and then eventually blindness. And so what they found here, though, is when they used these Yamanaka factors, they were able to get amazing results over three different trials. And one seemed to be better than the other, and then better than the other. And so the results, what I'm sharing with you, and I'm just going to leave for you here today, is that this is just the beginning. So if we're able to restore eyesight, and we're able to return the rejuvenation of our skin. And now there's also stem cell-based therapy, which is different than Yamanaka factors, for joint repair without having to do surgery. And we're able to then use, again, if we start to wear out, I'm going to talk about more on this in the show, if we start to wear out uh, even our heart or kidneys, for us to be able to get bioidentical kidneys printed is the future. And we're not that far away. I mean, I've actually spoken with colleagues doing this now, but it still has to go through three phases of FDA clinical trials, which it should. There's no way we should experiment on humans with these things, right? So let's make sure it goes through. Again, like I'm not the biggest fan of the FDA. I'm, not, I'm just like, there's some things they do great and some things maybe not as much. And I get it. It's probably a tough you know, position to be in. But I am glad for the most part that they are looking out for safety for these specific things. And even though, there, again, there can be so much benefit in stem cells and peptides, they've already approved like 100 different peptides or more, um, it is still good to earn the caution in the beginning, or on the side of caution. We just don't want to end up with, you know, all of these people or half these people doing this end up with cancer, you know, in 10 years from now. I don't like to see things rushed through the process because we don't know what's going to happen in a decade. So long-term studies are definitely needed. However, think about, you know, as you get older, if you're keeping yourself healthy, you know, you maybe start to wear out the joints, the cartilage, the anticular cartilage, all these things are coming that we're going to be able to rebuild them. It's absolutely phenomenal. But here's the thing. I just think that like, yeah, in your 80s and 90s, you do want your hearing. You do want your vision. You do want your strength. You don't want to be in pain. And so I, I want this to bring you hope. I really do. So let's look at it right now. Let's go over the specific uh, factors and the actual uh, labs that are being used. And we'll take it from there. Okay, so we're going to get started now with the actual studies themselves. What I want to do is just bring you an overall summary. I'll give you a quote by uh, Dr. David Sinclair and his team that uh, actually had this work published in the Journal of Nature. Basically, Nature is the journal itself. So what the team did was actually look at epigenetics. So it looks at the programming of the actual cell itself. And what it did was it changed the environment, it changed the epigenetics to tell the cell to become more youthful. Or not only to become more youthful, to reset itself to be like a younger eye. And that's exactly what it did. So the team's approach involved epigenetics, a field of science that studies heritable changes that can activate or deactivate genes within any change in the underlying DNA sequence of these genes. Their experience refined a technique that won the Nobel Prize in 2012. Essentially what it does is it implements or uh, introduces a harmless virus into a few genes called Yamanaka factors after the, after the researcher, Yamanaka, who discovered them, and it reprograms the DNA of mature cells to transform back into young pluripotent stem cells. These can then regenerate function lost to age, illness, or injury. The virus payload is turned on and off via injection of a selective inducer molecule. Typically, I know what David Sinclair uses, is typically an antibiotic. The cell uh, reprogramming method could lead to future disease therapeutics. They're also looking at it for tumors, cancerous tumors. Uh, but in this, the glaucoma model mice who received the injection treatment gained back roughly half of their previously lost visual ability. In other experiments, middle-aged mice who received the injection scored similar to younger mice in visual tests. So basically, the older mice in a, in a subsequent follow-up lab actual, or test actually showed 
essentially the same vision as younger mice. Plus, their DNA showed expression and methylation, signatures that resemble the genetic material of, of younger mice. So, not only did they regain their eyesight, but their actual cells, if you were to look at them, even though it was a mouse that was maybe like in human years, 70 years old, it actually looked like that of a 20 year old, 30 year old. Pretty remarkable, right? So uh, they also found that these recovered functions required two DNA methylation enzymes that could be responsible for these epigenetic changes during the reprogramming. And again, now they're looking at this in terms of potential side effects, cancer, et cetera, but also maybe we can use these for cancer therapeutics in the future as well. So that, that one is, is out of NIH. Now I wanna share you directly out of Harvard. This is actually Harvard Specific Stem Cell Institute. So it's HC. Uh, SI, which is uh, a little bit different, or H <laughs> HSCI, and it's, a, uh, it's an offset of Harvard University and Harvard Medical as well. So again, uh, David Sinclair is part of this team, published in uh, the journal Nature, working on vision loss in animals with a condition mimicking human glaucoma, which leads to blindness uh, through many people throughout the world. David Sinclair was quoted as saying, our study demonstrates that it's possible to safely reverse the age of complex tissues such as the retina and restore its youthful biological function. If affirmed through further studies, these findings could be transformative for the care of age-related vision diseases like glaucoma in the fields of biology and medical therapeutics for disease at large. So pretty remarkable, again, using specific Yamanaka factors, the three specific ones uh, that I talked about on my previous podcast, and what they're enabling uh, cells to do is actually revert back to essentially stem cells. And these stem cells then have the ability to differentiate as healthy, youthful cells, whether it's the eye, joints, skin, et cetera. So this is truly the future of medicine. It is not just about palliating symptoms. It's not just trying to stop the spread of a disease. It is actually reversing the body to a more youthful, healthy time. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, I get excited about this. I'll continue to update you on future studies, new studies, cutting edge breakthroughs, and much more. And if you'd like to join us, we're having a whole event all about the best wellness protocols that are out there in the world right now. 16 leading experts will be speaking at the event. Uh, and then again, all these cutting edge breakthroughs and so many amazing interactive exhibitors as well. You can find that at reimagininghealthevent.com. Thank you everybody, I appreciate you. And of course, share the show with anyone you feel it can serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.